Hey neighbors, the handyman here with Initiative Coffee Company along with the fourth Beagle Boy, Jake Del Maro. And today we are going over DDEX 4-8, The Broken One, written by Joshua Kelly, editors Claire Hoffman and Travis Woodall. This is a two-hour mod for Tier 2 play, tuned for five fifth-level characters. The food stores of Aras now are running out, and on top of that, taxes are due soon. The party faces mob justice and has a tough choice to make. The module features sensitive content in the NPC Luca, and you should probably know the comfort level of your table ahead of time before you run this mod. Part 1. An untimely slaughter. Taxes are due to Lord Strahd in the form of livestock. Fortunately, several sheep have been set aside for this purpose. Unfortunately, they have all recently been slaughtered. The party investigates the scene of the slaughter and meets Luca Barbu, the now orphaned son of the local barber. The investigations lead to the sheep's pen around the village to Luca's house where the party faces down a mob of angry villagers. Jake, start us off. So, I do like... I, what, the do, the do's. Mm -hmm. I do like the fact that if you've played in Barovia and you've, been, you've helped out a rat now and Randovich doesn't see you as a total jerk face, like, he, like, it, it engages the party at the very get-go. It's like, he's with two tax collectors in the beginning, and if he likes you, then you eat with him. If he doesn't, he they eat, and you don't. Right. And, you like, that's kind of neat. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's a neat kind of concept, like, where it's like, don't, like... I, I do believe that there are a lot of parties out there that probably have the friendly towards like you know, the trust of the Burgermaster story award, mm -hmm. which is nice because we have a lot of situations where we don't get to utilize previous rewards. But I do yeah. like the fact that um, the season four season has um, an immediate usage of story awards. It mm -hmm. wasn't like they're there and then they're gone. Like <clears throat> it's a very self-contained thing instead of like. We have season ones, we have season uh, se uh, season agnostic CCCs that just are like, here's a story award, and then it's like, the story award will say, like, it will be used at a later date. In a later and module, like, and then it's never yeah. used. And yeah. then the, the CCC <laughs> or the con never does it, and they forget yeah. about it, and, you know. That's whatever. maybe the most frustrating part about story awards, is seeing all of them that are like, I promise this will come up later. You should like, keep this in mind and note it on your character sheet, and then it it just doesn't come up. Like, well, that's, and part well, of that is just like the disconnected disconnection between the authors, right? Like, because there's not kind of like a, a whole season game plan where everybody gets in the same room or Zoom call or whatever to like map out what their part of that season is. There's just no no way to like facilitate the the use of these story rewards. Yeah, and, like, I just, I mean, I've got many characters. I mean, one of my favorites has probably got 40 story awards that just don't get used. And it's, like, right. and, and, like, the way you normally acquire them are really <clears throat> unique and interesting. And, like, that's a story on its own. And, like, if someone has something semi-adjacent to what I'm saying, like, hey, I got the story award from here. I don't know if this might be applicable like, mm. it's me trying to use my character because I've played him in previous adventures. Like, even if it's not a direct correlation, like, mm. there's a flump one that uh, from right. season three, and there's like a CCC that has like the mention. Like, if you help a flump, they know, like, their their whole mm. hive mind figures it out. Yeah. But there's no like story award for it. And it's like, this is a story award point, right? Give this a right. story Just award. Just make this a story reward. Anytime your party, anytime this person encounters a flump, the six times throughout all the mods, all 2,000 modules you. or whatever, they know you. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, but that's... it's it's nice that this is this is done <clears> like that. And I also like the fact that it's it has a negative component where mm -hmm. it's like if he if you've done if you kind of crossed him, he's like I'm begrudgingly working with you. Like, I don't I don't even think it's begrudgingly working. I think it's a show of force, right? Like, yeah. I would run this as like, no, you stand there and watch me eat because you're hungry and I'm not kind of scenario because he's meant to be uh terrible right like he's burgermeister cool. randovich is uh he's not awful a good person. he's a bad dude like he's, he's a <laughs> not great person but like then when it's like i do like this next part where it's like hey there's a lot of crap going on we got to figure it out like hey our 
the other term turnips are like frozen mm -hmm. you know how can we do it and there's like a list of solutions of things you can do i don't like as i was reading it it was kind of not clear it was like oh you get to talk about the things that you could do and then it's like and then not do any of them then not do any of those <laughs> yeah. things and i'm like like if you were just to do those things probably you could skip the adventure yeah you or know? like you know i wonder if like the plan there was to be a way to stretch this into a four hour mod and it just didn't didn't come, come together the in the end you know like like if i i could see um any of those bullets right taking 10 or 15 minutes to deal with like a little skill, skill challenge you explain what you yeah. do or it could be like five minutes a piece and I yeah. you and you know that's still 20 minutes of gameplay <clears throat> yeah of like your characters using their resources or some baloney like that like or just like stretch like flexing their like uh social muscles creative. like creative being creative stretching the, the limits of their characters like these are all interesting things to do and engaging things for players if you have the right players um also, but yeah i i want to be in the writing room when there is a special side box that says killing ivan radovich or his tax collectors <laughs> i want to be very clear here one of the authors or, or the author or maybe even like the writers were like I had a really crazy playthrough where they were just tired of Ivan. <laughs> and they just murdered him outright. And in they his murdered home. him. And then then Strahd sent two vampire spawn just to flex on them. Not kill them. Right. Just to be a general displeasure <clears throat> and exist. Yeah. Like, I, it, it just... Whatever whatever playtest happened where like <laughs> the author got that scarred, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like that blows. Where they just like started off with, they started the adventure like, with like just we're outright seven murder. In. Yeah. yeah, we're seven of these in and we realize that Radovich He's been awful sucks. every time. Let's just Yeah, I th yeah. think we're just gonna cut the you know, get cut to the chase and just kill him. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So, let's skip this entire season. Right. We wanna leave, um, right? <laughs> So, I mean, I, I do believe then, you know, that's, I guess, moving on before the untimely slaughter. Mm -hmm. um, I I like Luca. I think he's a very interesting character. He's, um, he's, he's, a, he's a landmine of a character. He's, like, he understands that his dad's dead. Mm -hmm. Like, but, like, is still childish like like it's understands tough adult like, complexes. I mean, clearly they have, like, written in a developmental disability here. Yeah. In a way like, that does not feel. I mean, the quote that you have when when you're given of how you should play him says, "Boss says, Daddy left town and will not come back. I know better. He's in the dirt. I know it." Yeah. Even though, like, the developmental part is he he like mistreats his his or not he like messes up his tensing and it's like that's tough to do as a DM on the fly. Like it. Also, like extraordinarily tough. The frustrations where he like he punches his fists in the dirt and beats his head against wooden fence posts. Like I don't like that. Like there's a lot of issues here that make this a very tough character, tenuous character. Like you have to know the people at your table. Yeah. Um. To run this with any kind of six like. This and, is not a module that, like, you go to a convention and somebody's like, hey, run 4-8. The you broken know, the, one. The answer is no. Like, the answer is, the, this is not a mod that should be run for a one-shot, right? Like, I I just don't... I, just I don't. like the idea behind it. Like, it's just, if you have a group of... If you, if you have a party people that you're comfortable with, I agree. Mm -hmm. don't, don't, I don't think, unless you're running this in a series don't run this at a convention yeah like it's not a hard mod per se it's, it's just, just like it can it can just come off wrong right it comes off wrong like there's not a lot of there's not a ton of value overall for the potential risk right like and we'll get to that a little bit as we kind of get through the module a little bit more but this is this is um it's it's a not, tough character to represent in a way that isn't insensitive that isn't yeah. like you know um it would be easy to fall into like kind the of these almost. these tropes that are pretty offensive frankly and um, it's not because i don't i don't think anyone would do it in the intent of being offensive 
Right, but it's but just like, it's a tough way if you haven't like if you haven't experienced time. developmental even then, disabilities or experienced people with them, like. Even just, then, not wanting to do like, like having done stuff in like an extensive amount in high school, mm -hmm. like this, it, it even like reading through it, I'm like, uh, yeah, like I, I I wouldn't even be comfortable doing it, yeah. like for strangers. I don't, no, not even for strangers. For I really people don't. I know, like... Even if people I know, like it would be like I would give the heads up, like mm -hmm. your give me an perception check, like he, things aren't all there, like. Yeah. And in the in, in the most not offensive way, like hey, the, the things are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not... and I mean, like a lot of the stuff, like. And it'd probably be just word choices, you know. It, yeah. it, I think that would probably be like if I were to run it for strangers, I would change the words to be less. I don't say complex, but a much more simple phrase, and that's probably the extent at which I would do it. I I think the issue I have with it is. So much of this module depends on Luca not being able in and of himself to communicate, right? Like, so much of this well, seems like a plot device instead of just, like, another character that is that has interesting aspects to them. That it feels like kind of a means to an end rather than, like... I think it also speaks to the, the next mod which I'll give the spoilers if you haven't. Like, there's, you know, the, the mistress it allows him and his father... To or, stay with had her. ...had the equivalent to stay with her. Yeah. And, like, that's the agreement. And it's, like, and she, and like, even the quote on it, it's, like, it's to pay back a debt or something. And it's, like... Yeah. And you're, like, okay, like, I'll... All right. And you just... It makes... It, there's I think there's just lines being drawn, which aren't bad, like... I like the idea that they're touching, like, while we're at this awful season, like, not necessarily a bad writing season, mm -hmm. while we're at Strahd or, you know, Barovia, mm -hmm. let's just start knocking them out of the park. Let's just, like, if we haven't done it, just cross it off the list. Mm -hmm. And, like, I don't mind that. It's just... It's, I, I will say um, that... So, here's the issue. Season four is fraught with these kind of... Hand grenades insensitive hand grenades right like like this season is like manufactured out of like problematic stereotypes that just keep coming right like it, there's no like and we're not done with them yet more will come i'm sure yeah um like this whole season is which i think that's maybe also the one maybe of the one of the seasons the story the storytelling is good because it's consistent throughout and like yep. the stories lead into one another but these problematic issues that come up are like one of the main complaints when it comes to like the status of wizards of the coast right like when it comes to how they handle like cultural issues like the kind of hand grenades that come up here the characters that get written into these stories like they're a lot of the argument that like wizards isn't sensitive to cultural needs right it's, and that's the issue it's like it, it's like with everything in the foresight of going of everything going on and then we'll get back to actually being handy dms mm. is uh is we're looking at this what when was this written it was written back in yeah years ago and yeah 2016 I, I four years it, ago was it like and I guess five I thought it was so as long five years ago, and we're dealing with you know now the wizards of what's happening. We're not going to even touch that, mm -hmm. but like they addressed issues that like I don't think were bad. It's it's or that or like even can't come across wrong. It's just maybe is it that the timing of running these mods is a lot more problematic. Because there's, I don't want to say more awareness, but more of a highlight on this stuff versus in 2016. I mean, I, I think in I think these I think these like kind of problematic stereotypes were problematic in 2016. We just oh, didn't sure. realize it because we weren't sensitive sensitive to it, right? I think like yeah. the the light that has been shine like shown on this gives us the opportunity to realize things like oh maybe we shouldn't be writing in culturally stigmatized stereotypes in the content right maybe we shouldn't be you know associating whatever whatever race with given um cultural 
identities in the world, right? Like, these are things, that, like, maybe fantasy should stay fantasy, I guess is what it comes down to. But, like... I guess I ask you, Brian, as the as, since you ran this for us, mm -hmm. and you chose to do a very, I want to say light, but you chose the way you chose to run Luca, mm -hmm. and you've run the entire series for us. And looking back, do you think that compared to other seasons, season one, two, three, four, five... 9,000, do you feel that the story, I mean, beyond just the story, storytelling component, do you think that running it for our group made it more interesting dealing with the fact of how we reacted to it? Like, compared to, you know, season one, where it's like, we just want to make a drag ledge. And you're like, cool. Yeah, I mean, like, <clears throat> like, this particular instance is tough for me. And maybe it wouldn't be as tough if I wasn't, like, back in academics right now, right? Like, if I wasn't studying social yeah. power structures right now, maybe I would feel less kind of ambivalent about it, right? But as I was reading the content, I was uncomfortable when I was reading it. Yeah. <clears throat> I was uncomfortable kind of prepping to run it for you guys. I was uncomfortable running it. But for this particular series... Our goal is to run the mods as they're written, so, <clears throat> pardon me, so we can come up with, like, the weaknesses and strengths, right? And I think <clears throat> that this is one of those weaknesses, frankly. I don't think there's, like, the problem, if it was just, like, a character in the background, I would be less kind of ambivalent about it. But the problem comes with this entire module... Like, the whole plot is based off the fact that he struggles to communicate, right? Yeah. And, like, that becomes a whole situation and where, like... Of. And gets to... And, like, the whole plot is, like, let, like, people take advantage of this disabled kid, basically. Yeah. And so that's where I have a lot of, like, pushback and frustrations. And, like, frankly, if I were to run Season 4 again, I probably would just drop this module. Um... <clears throat> I don't think there's a lot that comes out of it um, that you couldn't narrate briefly um, yeah. and avoid this kind of like mess. Like, right? be like a downtime thing where it's like, hey, some guy tried to take advantage of Ivan. It's like Ivan didn't like that. Right. Or like Ivan, like you could, like it could just be the fact that like there's not enough food for taxes, right? Like that's Maybe you all do you the need. Other thing, like, those five bullet points. Yeah, I mean, like, the whole premise of this mod is to set up for the next mod where you're asking for help. Yeah. And, like, maybe you don't need to do this mod for there not to be enough food for taxes, right? Maybe Ivan's just like, hey, go talk to this lady in 4-9. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I just... There were, there were a lot of... I struggled a lot to run this mod, and, like, I guess I'll hide behind the fact that, like, we try to run the mods as they're written to get a good, fair understanding, um, even with some changes to make it more comfortable to run for me. I was still uncomfortable running it. It was still tough for me. I guess back to the actual <clears throat> mod itself, it was written in a way that kind of emphasizes how much this person was taken advantage of, yeah. and I think that also pushes... It, it like, when we look at the you know like beyond that entire predicament you know the, it, it's pretty obvious he's not not responsible like right. it should it it, it it made like even when i was like listening to this i was like mm, it wasn't him like yeah. clearly wasn't him and like through all of the different paths that the party can investigate it's it like a couple checks can really make it look like there's no rhyme or reason. It's like, mm -hmm. if you fail a DC 15 check, it doesn't look like, you know, it, there's, uh, you won't get the info that the, the, there's like literally marks on the sheep's skull that is like, you know, c carnivorous in nature. Like, <laughs> like if you miss that, it's like, oh, it's right. scratch marks. And it's like, uh, like, even still, there's a lot of, there's a lot, like the village, I feel like even acknowledges that he's not, smart and like they just yeah. needed outlets for mm -hmm. their frustration yeah and the way we went about it was through um 
quelling the mob and telling them to knock it off essentially yeah so let's get into <laughs> into part one a little bit here like you you find luca you do a bunch of kind of like exploration checks to figure out like what killed these sheep if you fail those checks it looks like luca might be responsible if you pass any of those checks it's very clear that he's not um he befriends someone in your party i do like that the mod specifically says he befriends the person who's the biggest curmudgeon at your table um which, roughest. <laughs> <laughs> which was real fun for me to mess with frank with i guess but um and then you go around the village and then you go to luca's house and then a mob comes to to kill luca which just like makes me even more uncomfortable about this character right but i do think it brings <clears throat> characters to action on that yeah it does like for sure. i i think there's a rally point and it's like the defense is i mean there's no rhyme like i really gotta walk away from a table if they surrender luca i'll be like yeah you guys are just bad people yeah so the options are surrender luca defend luca or flee flee with and luca quell. or quell the mob yeah like i just I only see one real option here. I mean, fleeing, I guess. But, like, even then, it's like, where does he go? Yeah, and, but... Um, and, like, but quelling is, like, the DC is 13 to quell the mob. Like, like, yeah, and it's it's to the point of going, like, stop being bad people. Like, he's yeah. clearly not the person. Like, he's kind like, of like, I, I guess, like, maybe the thought process of the authors here is, like everybody's evil in barovia right like just this by nature not... of being in barovia everybody's evil um which is like a weird dynamic right because like people get trapped there who are kind of evil dudes and evil ladies and evil in-betweens and evil non not on the whatevers and then people are also born in barovia and are somehow evil. It's a very complicated... Like, this is what I'm talking about. And I'm like... This is like whole... Season uh, four is the full spectrum of all of the problems that, like... All of the cultural issues that Wizards is facing. Hey, right? hey Brian. Hey, you can write your report just on oh, this. Oh, my you gosh. Know, how much I'm sure it'll come... Look, I'm sure it'll come up. Like, I'm sure it'll come like, up in my thesis. But... Season four, tabula rasa or nah. <laughs> <laughs> like, looking at, like... I think there's some very interesting... You got story awards out of this, depending mm. on what you do. But realistically, if you... I, if you surrender Luca, you should just be just surrender your character. Like, I, that would it would be it would be is, tough for me to run run characters who did like it I'd would be, be like, tough for me to move into the rest of the season because I'd just be like I can't. Your alignment shift happened, yeah. and you're just a bad person. Yeah, like like you're not getting out of Barovia because you deserve to be here. Like I don't know. For everything you know, the the other consequence could be something along the lines of like well i mean the consequence is revenant like revenant's gonna kick your ass mm -hmm. like <laughs> like i know you're level you're you're tier two but i would just ump up that guy and be like why'd you kill me bro yeah like that's and and you know every every thing afterwards is like you have a tainted spirit or something mm -hmm. like this is one way that if you had a table and you decided that you would stick it out that every single thing you interact with, if it's good or bad, like if it's bad, you'd be like, yeah, I remember that time when you killed that kid, and mm -hmm. like br keep on bringing it back up, yeah. being like, yeah, we get it, we're bad people. It's like, yeah, you are bad people. Yeah. Like, and I'm not, and I hate harping on that, but I think that if you're running this, you're clearly running it for a group. A group and, that you know, yeah. Like, like I said, like do not run this for people you don't know. Yeah. Um, um, but maybe don't run any of season four for people you don't know. If I'm on, like, if you're gonna run season four, like. This There's is a, a good season. Mod in there, but it's, th it's there good. are a lot of good mods, but this is a season overall that you have to be really comfortable with the group you're running for. Yeah, and so I mean, when you get back to it, I mean, you quell the mob. Realistically, he everything everyone goes away, and then we're uh, we're into part two. Yeah, you know, there's a there's a scream. There's a, a yeah. bloody body of a child in her arms saying it's here. And yeah, we're back into the fun. Right. Part two, Monsters and Mayhem. The true culprit, Eugene Addy, an auxiliary tax collector, is finally fully succumbed to his ravenous curse. He starts eating villagers and needs to be tracked and eliminated as swiftly as possible. 
After a series of events during the search, the party finds Eugene outside the blacksmith's home. In a showdown with Eugene, the heroes face a cursed a human, a, a cursed and dangerous human, as well as ghouls and guests. Um, yeah, I mean, like, if it was... <laughs> like, we go from a problematic NPC to, like, cannibalism, which is another, like, potentially problematic concept to run at a tape. Like, like, cannibalism is one of the things that's on, like, our... Uh, Vels and Vels and, uh, and and lines listing for our streams, like I mean, and and honestly, like it comes up more often than I thought it would, right? Like I expected it to be like, oh, whatever, it's it's fantasy role playing, but like there are a lot of people really uncomfortable with the concept of cannibalism. I think if it's, I was when for our stream. Uh, mm -hmm. You sent out a really, really long, extraordinarily long survey, mm -hmm. and realistically, I didn't know how I would feel about it, and I think that since it's, like, black screened, or, you know, even, like, just a lot of it's not hit details, like, mm -hmm. you don't see someone doing it, Sure. I think it's, like, the notion of it is a lot, I'll say more PG, but uh, it's still a rated R kind of thing. But it's, it's PG thirteen the, at this point. P, it's like yeah. PG thirteen to fifteen. Sure. Where it's like there's implied cannibalism. Yeah, like, and I suppose like maybe it matters that he's cursed and now a well, monster rather than just another person. I don't, I don't because know. Because like, he's he's not actually doesn't he isn't he actually like a way or something or am I just I, the he, stat block is for Eugene a cursed human. So no, he is a human. Well. Yeah. Never mind. I double checked that last night because I wanted to verify, but yeah, no, he's, he's just legit. A, a just neutral evil human because with like Eugene's wild mouth abilities. grows into a grotesque maw when the abilities. Yeah. You got it. So he just—he's just—he's literally a monster. So like, he still is a human, but like, he kind of is like a succubus or not succubus, um, homunculus or sure. whatever. And I mean, like, I guess maybe it's silly to complain about cannibalism in a season that is, has the leading protagonist as a vampire. Maybe that's like a foolish thing to complain about but uh you also don't encounter that vampire in season four so no you just encounter his uh, horrible wife yeah i don't know um and i mean it's just i think the fight's interesting it's tough um if, if, if you didn't if you uh, you know, you're gonna have to do all the things you have to track him yeah. you get to encounter a few more things which is nice it's like you there's a few like if you're keeping in a two-hour segment there's like five or there's six um that you're supposed to pick one or two of yeah and like they're all interesting like they're all interesting i whenever i see these lists of things that of of like random encounters that could happen they always assume that each of these will take much longer than they actually take like two minutes like it takes just as long as you reading it is doesn't uh, right so like like the idea for these is if you have a four hour time slot to fill you could run all six of them to fill that time slot but like you're not filling the time slot from these right like it's like two skill checks or a dexterity save or you know there's not there's not a They're lot of content people here picking up their dice i guess i don't it, it's they're all interesting they're all interesting but like you could run all six of them in two hours and still have yeah time to do it you know yeah so um, then you run into your fight i don't think there's anything crazy like note that what he can do i mean like that's really what he can do and like where the fight takes place right like there's ways to make the fight more challenging check. yeah like when you see him take try to bite someone do a horror check like you've never seen him go ah, mm -hmm. and his mouth you know unhinges like yeah. this is one of those times where we're you know we're only like there's not too many times where they ask for horror checks i but, think like, so this I think, is one of them yeah so i think this the issue is like as the dm you are encouraged to use your judgment on the horror checks throughout the whole season right Except they only really mention that one time, the first like time times. they talk about horror checks. And yeah. so, like, you forget about it very easily, especially if you're only prepping one mod at a time. Yeah. But if you're going to run season four, just, like, get, like, a post-it at your desk when you're prepping, like... 
pages. Don't forget about horror checks. Horror checks. Yeah. Like, and, like, this would be one of those situations, like, you had a, 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 a human exploding and then spiders coming out, that was a horror check. Like, it's a horror check. This, this yeah. definitely counts as a horror, like, you had a yeah. guy strung up as a puppet, horror check. Yeah. Like, just, just you, the horror checks are not supposed to, to inhibit your party. They but are, they, they are. an interesting dynamic to right. your party. They like, also, that's... they also have an impact in the final module of this season. Yeah. So, like, do keep that in, like... And it's, like, so-and-so gets plus one attack on our attack rolls and plus one damage for every failed horror check, right? Like, so if you've got party members that have failed 13 horror checks by this point... She is going to be a tough fight. Yeah, just cool it. Um, But, yeah. Maybe set a cap. (laughs) Right. There might be a cap in that stat block, too. I'm not sure, but... Like, that is where you're headed to with she, these horror checks. She has a CR32 stat block because <laughs> your people suck. Because you guys are bad at charisma saving throws. And they're charisma-based, which, like, are super rare, and if you don't have a sorcerer, bard, or warlock, you're in a lot of trouble. Well, you're going to paladin, too. Like, That's you got, true. You no, know, this is mod 2, so they can be realistically level 6 now. Yeah. Where he can actually add his save. But, really, but you know, this is one of those times where I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hooraying horror checks, but like. It's definitely an opportunity. This for could one. be an opportune yeah. time. Definitely since he's doing 21 necrotic damage to somebody's yeah, face. Yeah, it's bad news. Well, that's not good. Um, other than that, I think it's a pretty interesting idea. And then after that, you've got your conclusion, I guess. Yeah, with Eugene dead, the immediate threat subsides, but the taxes of Lord Strider still do. Um, the Ras now doesn't have the resources to pay up. This this leads into 4-9, the Tempter. Um, at the end of the module, if you're successful, a note comes from a nearby manor that says that Luca will be safe there and you should bring him. Um, we'll get into that on the next uh, tip video because it's a whole other mod. But um, ultimately, this mod is... Um, it's tough. There's a lot of things that can come up. It's got a lot um, of social issues. There's not so there's also not a lot of value, right? Like anytime it's you a, run like these like exploration. It's a filler check, mod almost. Yeah. Like part two is tough because like the the random scenarios stuff is always a challenge and never really pays off the way you want it to. It could be a character building mod. But sure. like it's not like, you know, you're eight mods in at this point. Like, you shouldn't yeah. put your characters up to it. Yeah. But anyway. You didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, there it is, 4-8, the broken one. Thank you so much for listening to some advice to streamline and run it at your tables. Be a good neighbor. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe. Find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon. From now until the next time, we'll be together.